In this video, we're going to go ahead and practice multiplying some decimals together using the standard algorithm. Real quick before we get started, if you'd like to download a free copy of this PDF and do these problems with me, feel free to do so. You can find a link to that in the description box below, where you can also find the answer key as well of everything that I have written in this video. All right, let's get started. For number one, we have 49.8 or 49 and 8 tenths multiplied by five. Now we're just going to really ignore the decimals and then think about them later. So this 49.8 we're going to go ahead and think about that as just 498. So I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite that below. Okay. And then we're going to multiply this number here by five. Now five is already a whole number, so we don't have to worry too much about that. So we're going to go ahead and multiply this by five. Now let's go ahead and just multiply these two numbers the way they are, and then consider the decimal afterwards. So let's see here, we have 498. We're just going to go ahead and set this up vertically. We put the one with more digits on top, just like with when we're doing uh, non decimals. So we're gonna do 498 and multiply it by this five here. Let's see how that's gonna look. So we're gonna start with this, uh, we're gonna start with this five and multiply it by eight. That's going to be 40. So I'm gonna put the zero here and then carry the four. After we do that, we're going to take this five, multiply by nine. That's gonna be 45. 45 plus this four is gonna be 49. So it's gonna put the nine and then carry the four. And then finally, we're gonna take this five over here, multiply it by four, that's gonna be 20. And then 20 plus this four up top is gonna to be 24. So we'll put the four, and then we're gonna go ahead and put that two next to it, so it's 24. Now at this point, we have to remember that we did ignore the decimals that we had in the beginning. So how many decimal places did we have? Well, 49.8, we really just ignored one decimal place in the original problem. So we have to make sure that we consider that one decimal place in our product or our answer here and move over one spot to the left here. So our answer or our product is actually gonna be 249. So our product actually isn't even a decimal. It just happens to be a whole number here. Let's try another one. For number two, let's go ahead and multiply this 5.84 or five and 84 hundredths by two. Now, this first number here, five and 84 hundredths, it actually has two decimal places, but we're gonna think about this as just 584 for just a moment, okay? And then we have this number over here of two. It's only got one digit and it's a whole number, and that's kind of nice here. So we're gonna multiply this by two. So if we go ahead and multiply these two together, we should get our product, and then we can think about the decimals in just a moment. So let's take this 584, and let's go ahead and multiply that by two. So the one with more digits on top and the one with less digits on bottom. So how we're gonna do this, we're gonna start with this two, multiply by four, that's gonna be eight. We're gonna put that right beneath here. Then we'll take this two and multiply by eight, that's gonna be 16. We'll put the six here in the tens place and put the one in the hundreds place. Then two times five, that's gonna be 10, plus this one, that's gonna be 11. So we're gonna put the 11 right next to it. So this would be our product if these were whole numbers, but keep in mind that we have decimals. Now in the beginning, this five and 84 hundredths, we actually ignored two decimal places in that value. And then so we need to consider two decimal places in our product. So we have to move over two times over here. And so our final product we're gonna have is going to be 11 and 68 hundredths. That's gonna be our product here. Here's number three. For number three, we have this 482 thousandths. That's this first decimal. I'm gonna multiply it by 32. It has three decimal places, but we're gonna go ahead and ignore them and just think about this as 482 for now. And we're gonna go ahead and multiply this by 32. Now this 32 here doesn't have any decimal places, which is kind of nice for now. And so we're gonna multiply this by 32. So if we can multiply these two whole numbers, then we can deal with the decimals in a little bit. So which one has more digits? What's well, 482? It has three digits. Multiply that by 32, which only has two digits, but make sure the place values are lined up nice and neat. And let's go ahead and begin our standard algorithm. So first two times two, that's gonna equal four. It's kind of nice, we don't have to carry. And then we have this two times eight here, that's going to be 16. So we'll put the six, then we have to carry the one. Then we have this two and multiply it by four, that's gonna be eight plus this one, that's going to be nine. So this first partial product is gonna be 964. Now this two went and multiplied by all the numbers on top, so we are done using it. And we're on to this three, which really represents 30 because it's in the tens place. So we're gonna put the zero to show that that's 30. And then we have this three, it's gonna multiply by each number. So three times two, that's gonna equal six. Let's go ahead and put the six here. Now three times eight, that's gonna be 24. Let's go ahead and put the four here and then carry the two into the hundreds place. And then three multiplied by four is 12 plus this two is gonna be 14. So we'll put the four here and then carry that one right next to it because there's nothing left to put. And that's our second partial product that we're gonna go ahead and add here. Now four plus zero, that is just going to be four. 
Next, we're gonna go ahead and add this six plus six, that's gonna be 12. We'll put this two and then carry the one. Then we have one plus nine, that's 10. 10 plus four is 14. So we're gonna put this four and carry the one. Then we have one plus four, that's going to equal five. And then finally we have this one over here and that's gonna come down right in front. Okay, so this would be the product if we were just looking at whole numbers, but you gotta think back and remember, wait a second, we ignored three decimal places in the original problem. So we have to go and make sure from the right here that we count three decimal places before we decide where to put our decimal list, right? So our product here, or our answer to a multiplication problem is gonna be 15 and 424 thousandths. Okay, so that would be our product. All right, for number four, let's try another one here. We're gonna go ahead and take this 59 and 3 tenths and multiply it by 26. Now this 59 and 3 tenths, we're gonna go ahead and ignore the decimal here. So we can think of this as 593, just for our standard algorithm. And then we're gonna go ahead and multiply this by 26, which is a whole number, just like we've been doing in the past few problems. So let's go ahead and multiply these whole numbers together. Now the number with more digits is 593, that goes on top. We're gonna multiply this by this 26, which has less digits. We're gonna put that on the bottom here. All right, cool. So we're gonna take this six and start with that one, multiply by three, that's going to be 18. We'll put the eight over here and carry the one. Next, we're gonna take the six and multiply it by nine. Now that happens to be 54 plus the one, that's gonna be 55. We'll put the five and then carry the five into the hundreds place. At this point, uh, we can go ahead and say that we can have this six and multiply it by five, that's gonna be 30. 30 plus this five is going to be 35. So we can put the five in the hundreds place and then the three right next to it in the thousands place. All right, this six has done its job. It's multiplied by all three numbers on top. We're done using these little ones and fives that carried over as well. It's time to focus our attention on this two, which is really a 20. So we're gonna go ahead and put a placeholder here and then go ahead and the two is going to do its job, which is we're gonna multiply by all the numbers on top. So first two times three, or 20 times three, if you wanna think about that, that's 60. So that's why this is gonna be a six right over here and the zero and right next to it means 60. Now we have two times nine, that's going to be 18. Let's go ahead and put the eight over here and then carry the one. And then finally we have this two times five, which is gonna be 10, plus this one, that's gonna be 11. So let's put the one and this other one. And I think we can add these partial products together now. So we have eight plus nothing, that is going to be eight. Next, we have this five plus six, that's going to be 11. We'll put the one and carry this one here. One plus five is six, six plus eight happens to be 14. Let's go ahead and put that four here and then carry the one. And then we have one plus three, which is four. Four plus the one is gonna be five. Put the five over here. And finally, we have this one. Let's put that right next to all the other numbers that we have here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this product and think about where should we put that decimal because we ignored it earlier. There's only one decimal place in the original problem. So we should have one decimal place from the right here or only one decimal place in our answer or our product. So our final answer here is gonna be 1,541 and eight tenths. Here's number five. For number five, we have five tenths multiplied by three and 58 hundredths. Now I'm gonna start by focusing on this 3.58 because it has three digits or three and 58 hundredths. Ignoring the decimals, we can think about this as 358. We're gonna go ahead and multiply that by uh, this other number. We have 0 0.5, which is really just five tenths or a half. And so this is going to be thinking about, if we ignore the decimal, right, that's really just going to be five, okay? So we, we're focusing on 358 first because we wanna put that on our top row of our standard algorithm. And we're gonna multiply that by five, which is just going to be our single digit there in the ones place, all right? So let's go ahead and multiply. So five times eight, that's going to be 40. We'll put the zero and carry the four. Then we'll take this five, multiply by five, that's 25. 25 plus this four is gonna be 29. So we'll put this nine here, then carry the two. Then finally, we have five multiplied by three. That's gonna be 15. Then 15 plus two, that's gonna be 17. So we'll put the seven, then we'll put the one right over here. Now, before we say that's our answer, let's look at how many decimal places that we ignored earlier. It looks like we ignored one decimal place here and we ignored two more decimal places here. So that's a total of three decimal places. So starting from the right side here, let's go ahead and create three decimal places. So moving over to the left three times, we're gonna say our product here is gonna be one and 79 hundredths. You can go ahead and drop that zero at the end of the problem because it doesn't make a difference. Here's number six. 
For number six, we have nine and five tenths multiplied by four and 18 hundredths. Now, which one has more digits here if we ignore the decimals? If you were thinking it was this four and 18 hundredths, you are right. I think we're gonna think about this as 418 for just a little while while we're using our standard algorithm. Then we're gonna multiply this by this other number, which is going to be instead of nine and five tenths, we're gonna think about that as 95 for just a few moments. Which one has more digits? Well, it's that 418, so that's gonna go on top. And then we're gonna multiply this by 95, and that has less digits, but let's line up the place values, it's very important. And let's go ahead and do our standard algorithm. First, we have this five times eight, that's going to be 40. We'll put the zero and then carry that four. Next, we'll take this five, multiply by one, that's gonna be five, but then add that four, that's gonna get us nine. After that, we have five times this four, and that's gonna be 20, so we can put the zero and then put that two right next to it. At this point, we're done using this five, and we also used the four already, so we can go ahead and focus on this nine, which again, this nine really represents 90, so we need a placeholder, right? So nine times eight, that's going to be 72. Let's go ahead and put a two in the tens place and carry the seven. Then we have this nine multiplied by one, that's gonna be nine, plus the seven, that's gonna be 16, so we'll put the six and then carry the one. And then finally, we're gonna take this nine and multiply by four, that's gonna be 36. 36 plus this one is gonna be 37, so let's put the seven under the two and put this three over to the left here. All right, so I think we're done multiplying. We have our two partial products, so we can just go ahead and add them up. So first we have zero plus zero, that's still gonna be zero. Then we have nine plus two, that's gonna be 11. We'll put the one and carry the one. Then one plus zero plus six is gonna be a seven. Put that over here. Then we have two plus seven, that's going to be nine. And finally, we can take this three over here and put it right next to all the other digits. All right, so we have our product here, but we have to remember where to put our decimal. Now, we ignored one decimal place from this nine and five tenths, and we ignored two decimal places from this four and 18 hundredths, so that's a total of three decimal places we ignored. So let's go ahead and not ignore them any longer and put them where they belong. So we can use those and say that we know the product here is going to be 39 and 71 hundredths. Again, we're gonna ignore that zero at the end because it doesn't make a difference because 710 thousandths is the same thing as 71 hundredths in terms of its value. Here's number seven. For number seven, we have 28 hundredths and we're gonna multiply that by 54 and eight tenths. Now let's see if we can figure out which one has more digits. Now, it looks like to me that this 54 and eight tenths has more digits. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite that for now without the decimal and think of it as 548. And we're gonna multiply that by what? We're gonna say, let's take this other decimal that we have here, this 28 hundredths, ignoring the decimals, let's think about that as a 28 for now. Okay, so with the one with more digits is 548. Let's put that on top. We're gonna to multiply that by 28, so just make sure you line up your place values, just like this. All right, now let's just use that standard algorithm. So let's start with eight times eight. That's going to be 64, so we'll put the four in the ones place, carry that six. Next, we have eight times four, that's 32. 32 plus the six is gonna be 38. Put the eight in the tens place and carry that three into the hundreds place. Then we have eight times five, that's gonna be 40. 40 plus this three is going to be 43. So that's our first partial product. Now this eight has done its job, so it has the six and the three. It's time to focus our attention on this two, which is really 20. So let's go ahead and put a placeholder to show that that's gonna be 20. Onto this two now, so two times eight, that's going to be 16. Let's put that six and then carry the one. Next we have two times four, that's gonna be eight. Eight plus that one is going to be nine. Let's put that nine. It's kind of nice we don't have to carry any numbers. Now we have two times five and that's going to be 10. So we're gonna go ahead and put the zero right over here and then the one to the left. Now let's go ahead and just add these partial products together and see what we get. So this four plus zero is going to be four. This eight plus six is going to be 14. So we're gonna put the four and then carry the one. Next we have one plus three, which is four. Four plus nine, that's gonna be 13. Let's go ahead and put that three here and then carry the one. After that we have one plus four, which is five. Five plus nothing is still going to be five. And then we have this one over here, and if we bring that down, that's just gonna be right in front. So we have one, five, three, four, four. Now, what about where the decimal goes? Well, we ignored two decimal places for this first value, and we ignored one more decimal over here. So we need three decimal places to be accounted for. So if we start from the right here and go three spaces to the left, we now know that that's where decimal is gonna be. So our answer here, our product is gonna be 15 and 344 thousandths. That'll be our answer. 
Here's number eight. For number eight, we have 48 hundredths multiplied by 762 thousandths, okay? So which one's gonna have more digits? Well, the zeros don't really matter, right? So we just take a look at this second value here. Um, this is actually, we can think about this as 762 if we ignore the decimals, right? So that's just a three digit number. And let's go ahead and multiply this by our second value here. So for our second value, uh, we have this 48 hundredths, but if we, if we go ahead and think about this as a whole number, that's really just gonna be 48. All right, so let's go ahead and multiply these values here. So 762 definitely has more digits. So let's go ahead and put that on top. 40 has less digits. So let's go ahead and line up these uh, place values just like this. And let's begin our standard algorithm. Now eight times two, that's gonna be 16. Let's go ahead and put that six and then carry the one. Then we have this eight times six, that's gonna be 48. 48 plus this one is gonna be 49. Let's go ahead and put that nine here and then carry the four. Next, we have this eight multiplied by seven, that's gonna be 56. 56 plus four is going to be 60. So let's go ahead and put a zero here and then put a six over to the left. And this eight over here has done its job. So we're done using the eight, as well as these little numbers up top. And it's, we're gonna go ahead and focus on this four, which is really 40. So we have to make sure we put a placeholder so we don't accidentally think about it as a four, not a 40. Now, finally, we can do this four multiplied by two. That's going to be eight. Let's go ahead and put that eight down here. Then this four times a six, that's gonna be 24. So put the four and then carry the two up top. Then this four times seven is gonna be 28. 28 plus two, that's gonna be 30. Let's put the zero and then put the three to the left here. So finally, we can go ahead and add these partial products together and say six plus nothing is still going to be six. Then nine plus eight is going to be 17. Let's put the seven then carry the one. Then we have one plus zero plus four, that's gonna be a total of five. Then we have six plus zero, that's gonna be six. And then this three can just come on down and we can put it in front. All right, so how many decimal places did we ignore? It looks like we ignored two over here and then three more decimal places from this one. So it's a total of five decimal places that we ignored. So let's go ahead and put them back in our answer. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, go all the way from the right to the left here. And it looks like our answer, our product is gonna be uh, three zero point three six five seven six. So now, how would you read this properly? Well, this is the tenths place, hundredths place, thousandths place, ten thousandths place, and hundred thousandths place. So you could read this as thirty six thousand five hundred seventy six hundred thousandths. That would be the correct way to say this decimal value. Alrighty, so there you have eight different practice problems on multiplying decimals. If you found the video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and letting me know in the comment section down below. And if you feel like a classmate or friend might also find this helpful, please feel like sharing it with them. That would be awesome. As always, keep it the great work that you're already doing, and I'll see you in the next one.